I got a little cocky, I made more than a little bit. Well, is this a question of people over protocol? Are we risking throwing out the baby out with the bathwater? Joining us now is Julian Figueroa. He is Kinetic Finance Channel host. Um, Julian, it's good to talk to you. And I wanna set up this conversation by talking about why we reached out to you initially. You did have my funds in FTX. You did lose money as a result of the collapse. Talk to me about the direct impact. How much did you have in funds and how much did you lose? Um, I don't want to put a specific number on it, but call it like a year's salary for, you know, somebody working in this industry. Um, as for the impact of it, you know, it's a year's salary. I'm a young guy, you know, me at my age losing that amount of money versus somebody who was in their 40s or 50s big difference. And personally, I also knew other people on that platform who lost, you know, upwards of like, you know, high six to seven figures. So compared to that, I'm in a much, you know, better place. And yeah, I, I feel already that I'm moving on from it, just specifically being somebody in this space that is more about education rather than trying to extract as much money from it as possible. Uh, with that said, what do you make? of what we've heard from Sam Bankman-Fried, not just at the New York Times Deal Book event yesterday, but from GMA this morning, saying essentially this wasn't fraud. I just simply was in over my head. Um, you can have both things going on at the same time. It can, it can be a case of fraud that you knew was going on and you willingly overlooked it. What I see when I watch the interviews of Sam Bankman-Fried, just from like a body language perspective, is he's, he's shivering, he's looking down, he's... It's, it, it seems that his trajectory with all this media is going in the way of almost eventually pleading to some form of like insanity or something going on here. Uh, it's kind of publicly known that he took a lot of amphetamines while he was on the job. Um, it feels like all this has been ill-advised against, you know, the advice of his lawyers. So I don't know where this is ultimately going, but, you know, for him, I wouldn't be out on camera doing these interviews um, you know, miswording things like he has when this issue is so much bigger than him. Uh, the millions of lives that have been affected by this, he seems to just have no empathy or understanding of the uh, damage that he's caused. And in terms of trust, because a lot of crypto and Bitcoin educators who are online, we're seeing their, their comments filled with a lot, of, a lot of backlash as well. I see you still have your Satoshi t-shirt on there. So it still seems that you're, you're still holding on to this. What is still giving you faith at this point, Julian? What is giving me faith at this point? Well, I think one of the things that has come out of this that I kind of view from an educator standpoint is that we need to have a very clear delineation between what Bitcoin is and what cryptocurrency is. Bitcoin was invented in 2009. And if you actually look at Satoshi's white paper, the word cryptocurrency and even blockchain don't even appear in it. These are things that were you know, coined years after, and they've kind of become their own industry in of itself. A lot of people comparing it to kind of the internet bubble back in you know, the 2000s, where essentially you had a buzzword that was built on top of, and people got millions and billions of dollars of funding to build these you know, apps, these bridges to nowhere. Um, and then you have the genuine innovations that actually use the technology. Bitcoin I see is like the TCP IP, which a lot of people don't even know. It's the backbone of the internet itself. And the way that I see Bitcoin moving um, is it is going to be around long past you and I. Um, it's going to be churning out block after block, you know, years and decades after we're, you know, dead in the ground. This is a protocol that was built to last forever in permanence. Um, it's a digital money for the entire world, and we need to kind of coalesce and start to understand how that is separate from the rest of the cryptocurrency industry, which is a whole lot of grift and um, Ponzi schemes. So what's the lasting impact coming out of this, Julian? I know when we spoke before, you said, number one, it is about money being withdrawn from exchanges and really kind of going back to that decentralized system that so many bought into initially. Yeah. So, I mean, this is what makes Bitcoin such a unique asset, right? Like when you have stocks or ETFs and all these things, they don't function unless you have another counterparty, like a stock brokerage or a bank to interact with it. You can't really take possession of a stock, I guess, unless you had like a stock certificate. But even then, it's it's third counterparties that you always rely on to, to take possession of these things. And I think now because of this FTX thing, you've gotten this level of distrust among all exchanges and people are finally utilizing the killer app the killer feature of bitcoin which is that you can take full possession of your assets and nobody can take that away from you it's just lines of code it's just a public and a private key 
And it's been a very expensive and painful learning lesson for a lot of people in this space. Um, it's not even my first time that I've been rug pulled by an exchange, but it's further evidence that we need to have a digital financial system where we have complete control over our assets and we don't need exchanges. And frankly, you know, to anybody that's looking to invest or to take a part in this whole industry, it's important to realize that um, you can just hold your own funds. You don't need to have a custodian. It is a little bit daunting at first. There's a technical level of, you know, having your own wallet and setting that stuff up, but it's not nearly as complicated as, you know, some parties make it out to be. It's an hour of, you know, YouTube tutorials. And once you get that down, uh, nobody can take your money and nobody can take your assets. And I think that is a beautiful piece of technology that we need to leverage and explain to the world a lot better than we are today. As they say, hold your keys, hold your crypto. A big thank you to yeah. Julian Figaro, Kinetic Finance Channel host. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. All right. Well, stronger than expected.